Welcome in to Francis Marion University Athletics and tonight Patriot Baseball as Francis Marion takes on UNC Pembroke in a key three-game Conference Carolina series and in the latest installment of the Battle for I-95. UNC Pembroke, second in Conference Carolinas, comes in with an overall record of 29-13, and 17-7 and seven in conference play. Your Patriots are in fourth place at 28 and 13 with a 15 and 9 conference record. Francis Marion has won 13 of its last 15 contests. Starting lineup for UNC Pembroke tonight, leading off and playing center field, Christian Jane. Batting second at first base, Gage Hammonds. Batting third, the DH, Ethan Ott. In the cleanup spot in left field, Bobby Dixon. Batting fifth at third base, Trent Harris. Batting sixth at second base, Spencer Faulkner. Batting seventh in right field, Blake Henson. Batting eighth at shortstop, Wellington Guzman. Batting ninth in catching, Garrett Littleton. And in on the circle, excuse me, I'm used to softball now, on the mound, sophomore right-hander, Darren Bowen. Your Patriots are taking the field now as they're being introduced. We will run down their lineup after the playing of our national anthem. Starting lineup for your Patriots tonight. Leading off in right field, Will Hardy. Batting second to shortstop, Nafis Llanos. Batting third at third base, Todd Maddox. In the cleanup spot, the DH, Lineo Gonzalez. Batting fifth at third, first base, Darius Nobles. Batting sixth at second base, Tanner Wakefield. Batting seventh in left field, Lex Tutin. Batting eighth in catching, Isaac Shuck. Batting ninth in center field, Bill Hanna. And on the bump for your Patriots, sophomore right-hander, Halton Hardy. Again, for the Patriots, it's Hardy, Janos, Maddox, Gonzalez, Nobles, Wakefield, Tutin, Shuck, and Hanna. Halton Hardy, sophomore right-hander, 6'3", 6'1", 295 pounds out of Athens, Georgia, and East Jackson High School. Comes in with a 5-1 record. This will be his 13th appearance, his 12th start of the season. A 4.32 ERA. He has one complete game. He's thrown 58 and a third innings, allowed 80 hits, 34 runs, 28 of those earned, 14 walks and 43 strikeouts. Opponents are batting 328 against him. Patriots come into tonight third nationally in team batting average at 358. And the Patriots lead all of NCAA Division II and runs in hits with 546. And they're in the top 10 in runs scored with 396. UNC Pembroke comes into tonight's contest with a team batting average of 317 and a team ERA of 513. Umpires for tonight are Brian Miller behind home plate, 
and Michael Brody on the base pass. I am Michael Hawkins, the Associate Athletic Director for Communication Services here at FMU. And I will be bringing you the action tonight. Caleb Reeves is in the director's chair. And on the cameras tonight from the Media Center crew, we have Princess Bigelow, Malaysia Bolware, Nyquan Jordan, and DeAsia Griffin. Leading off for UNC Pembroke, junior center fielder Christian Jane. He's batting 342 this season, 42 runs scored, nine doubles, three homers, 35 RBIs, and a 440 on base percentage. Jane also shares the team lead in stolen bases as he is 16 out of 20. That one is grounded to Maddox, a funny hop, but he handles it and throws Jane out for the first out of the contest. 83 degrees at first pitch. Really no wind to speak of, as you saw when they showed the uh, flagpole during the national anthem. Next up for the Braves, Gage Hammonds, senior first baseman, batting 408, which leads the squad. 42 runs scored, 16 doubles, 5 homers, 35 RBIs, and a 517 on base percentage. Hammond, 6'3", 205-pound senior out of Chadburn, North Carolina, came to UNC Pembroke by way of Southeastern Community College. And Hardy makes quick work of the Braves' first baseman for out number two. That will bring up the DH, Ethan Ott. Freshman is batting 366, 45 runs scored, seven doubles, nine homers, 46 RBIs, and a 455 on base percentage. Ott stands in at 6'2", 215 pounds, out of Chesapeake, Virginia, a graduate of Greenbrier Christian Academy. And the sophomore right-hander quickly ahead of the DH, no balls and two strikes. One-two pitch, a swung on, but it's in the dirt. Shuck will have to throw it down to first, which he does. And the Braves go one-two-three in the top of the first. We played half an inning, no score between Francis Marion and UNC Pembroke. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Carolinas. Back at Cormel Field at Sparrow Stadium in the Griffin Athletic Complex on the Frank campus of Francis Marion University here in Florence, South Carolina. No scores. Your Patriots are coming to the plate. Hardy, Janos, and Maddox will bat here in the bottom of the first. Action earlier today, the Francis Marion men's and women's tennis teams were both victorious. The 47th ranked men's team defeated Southern Wesleyan 6-1 and the 74th ranked women's team defeated Southern Wesley Wesleyan 7-0. Those two squads will play at North Greenville University to conclude their regular season tomorrow at noon. Francis Marion softball team will play a doubleheader at Belmont Abbey College tomorrow at one o'clock in Belmont, North Carolina. 
they will conclude their regular season on Monday with a twin bill at Erskine College, 1 o'clock first pitch in due west, South Carolina. On the hill for the Braves today, sophomore right-hander Darren Bowen. 6'3", 180 pounds out of St. Paul's, North Carolina and Red Springs High School. An 0-2 record with a 5.19 ERA. This is his 18th appearance, only his second start as he was the team's closer. He has on the season, in addition to his 0-2 record, he does have nine saves. He's thrown 34 and two-thirds innings, allowed 31 hits, 21 runs, 20 of those earned, 17 walks, and 68 strikeouts in those 34 and two-thirds innings. Opponents are batting 235 against him. Will Hardy will lead off for your Patriots, batting 389. 52 runs scored, which leads the team and is among the national leaders. 19 doubles, two homers, 34 RBIs, and a 476 on base percentage. Hardy, a local product from Evergreen, South Carolina. He's a graduate of South Florence High School. Hardy comes into the game with a 19-game hitting streak. Were he to reach on a base hit today, that would make it 20 and equal the fifth longest streak in program history, something that second baseman Tanner Wakefield did earlier this season. Hardy fights that one off by fouling it down the first baseline. Your Patriots, as always, led by longtime head coach Art Nabinett. His assistant coaches, Billy Henley, Connor Kelly, and Justin Henley. The athletic trainer, Sean Sneed. UNC Pembroke head coach is Paul O'Neill. His assistants, Jeff Jefferson, Daniel Britt, and Cliff Allred. Line drive right center field. That will get down for a hit. And Hardy has a 20-game hitting streak, equaling the fifth longest in program history. Next up will be the junior second baseman, excuse me, junior shortstop, Nafis Llanos, batting 376, 44 runs scored, six doubles, three homers, 30 RBIs, and a 473 on base percentage. Llanos, the hero of Wednesday's 12-10 victory at Augusta University, as he had a two-out, two-run single in the top of the ninth to break a 10-10 deadlock. Hardy, a perfect six for six in the stolen base category this season, if that's something Art Nabinett wants to employ here in the bottom of the first inning. Ground ball just outside of first base. Count goes to one ball and two strikes.
Patriots have registered double-figure hits in each of their last 18 contests, including five of those where they surpassed 20 base hits in a contest. One-two pitch lifted in the air to left field. Dixon comes in a few steps. He's fighting the sun but makes the catch. We're out number one. Braves defense is Dixon in left, Jane in center, Henson in right. Around the infield, Harris at third, Guzman at short, Faulkner at second, Hammonds at first, Littleton behind the plate, and Bowen on the mound. Todd Maddox, senior third baseman, will stand in next. Maddox batting 4.07, 48 runs scored, 14 doubles, 5 triples, a homer, 40 RBIs, and a 4.87 on base percentage. And all Maddox has done since having his streak of consecutive, consecutive games reaching base stopped at 79 was earned the Conference Carolina's Player of the Week for last week. Runners were going. Maddox swings and grounds it wide of first. Hammonds flips to Bowen. Close play at first, but he is out. Hardy takes second on the play. Maddox got down the line quickly that time, but Bowen was able to beat him to the bag. D.H. Lineo Gonzalez will stand in next. Gonzalez batting 395, 30 run, 31 runs scored, seven doubles, seven homers, 42 RBIs, and a 489 on base percentage. Patriots will send four lefties to the plate, or left-handed batters to the plate against the righty Bowen today. One one pitch from the righty to Gonzalez. High for ball two. Patriots lead the all-time series with UNC Pembroke, 75-45 with one tie. And the count is run full to Gonzalez. Leniola, fifth-year senior out of Sumter, South Carolina. Lakewood High School graduate. Matriculated at USC Sumter before coming to Francis Marion. Check swing. He did not go. Ball four. And the Patriots have two on with two outs. Darius Nobles will come to the plate. Graduate student first baseman batting 399. 47 runs scored, 10 doubles, 12 homers, and 47 RBIs. Those two figures both lead the squad. And a 516 on base percentage.
If nothing else, the Patriots have forced Bowen, a former closer, to throw at the very least 20 pitches here in the bottom of the first inning. Big cut, but Nobles fouls it back into the catcher's mitt. One-one pitch to Nobles, fouled back into the screen. Bowen ahead in the count now, one ball, two strikes. Same two teams tomorrow for a doubleheader, two o'clock first pitch, kind of unusual for the doubleheader to start at two, but it's two o'clock tomorrow. Seven inning contest followed by a nine inning, a nine inning affair. Two-two pitch up coming from Bowen to Nobles. Two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. Swing and a miss. Strike three. So the Patriots pick up a hit and a walk, but strand a pair of runners. We played one full inning. No score between Francis Marion and UNC Pembroke. This is the Patriots Sports Network. The Smallphones Club is the fundraising arm of the Francis Marion University Athletic Department and it supplies assistance to all 14 intercollegiate sports. On behalf of the student athletes at Francis Marion, I would like to thank all those who are members of the Smallphones Club for their support. Thank you. 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 Francis Marion University Athletics would like to thank the following sponsors. Adidas, Circle Park Behavioral Health Services, McLeod Regional Medical Center, Ken Jackson Remax Professionals, Pepsi, McDonald's, Rain's Hospitality, including Fairfield Inn, Spring Hill Suites, Courtyard by Marriott, Comfort Inn and Hyatt Place, King Cadillac Buick GMC, McLeod Sports Medicine, Chick-fil-A, State Farm and Agent Jim Stewart, Quincy Steakhouse, Little Caesars, La Quinta Inn and Suites, KFC and Arby's, Florence Toyota, The Waffle House, PD Electric Cooperative, Sparrow and Kennedy Tractor Supply, McCall Supply Inc., Western Sizzlin Steakhouse, State Credit Union, and Zaxby's. Dixon, Harrison, Faulkner, spots four, five, and six to bat for the Braves here in the top of the second inning. Setting the defense for your Patriots, it's Tootin in left, Hannah in center, and Hardy in right, Maddox at third, Janos at short, Wakefield at second, Nobles at first, Shuck behind the plate, and Hardy on the mound. Dixon, a senior, batting 362, 48 runs scored. That leads the squad, 16 doubles, 12 homers, 47 RBIs, and a 492 on base percentage. His homers and RBIs also lead the Braves. Dixon, 6'2", 225, out of Clayton, North Carolina, Cleveland High School. And in three pitches, he's a strikeout victim. That'll bring up Trent Harris, junior third baseman, batting 315. 32 runs scored, six doubles, a couple of homers, 22 RBIs, and a 408 on base percentage. Oh 
Harris out of Raleigh, North Carolina, came to Pembroke via UN, uh, High Point University. Ground ball to Wakefield. Bobbles it. Recovers in time to retire Harris. Spencer Faulkner stands in, batting 295, 47 runs scored, three doubles, 27 RBIs, and a 433 on base percentage. He, along with leadoff man Christian Jane, both have 16 stolen bases on the season to lead the squad. Off-speed pitch catches the outside corner, and Hardy appears spot on here at the beginning of our contest. That one misses outside. Faulkner didn't chase. The cow's now even at 2-2. Two and two. That one misses low, and the count is run full. First three ball count for Hardy in the game tonight. That misses inside for ball four, and the Braves have their first base runner. That'll bring up the right fielder, Blake Henson. He's batting 339, 11 runs scored, three doubles, two homers, 17 RBIs, and a 400 on base percentage. Henson out of Newburn, North Carolina, and Newburn High School. 5'11, 170 pounds. Ground ball right back to Hardy. And he throws Henson out for the third out of the inning. Braves get their first base runner via a walk, but he is stranded. Head to the bottom of the second. No score between the Patriots and the Braves. This is the Patriot Sports Network. Francis Marion University has always put its students first because the very best college education must be both meaningful and affordable. We've frozen tuition for three straight years. We've expanded our programs, opening the door to a variety of rewarding careers. Our campus has been recognized as the safest in the state. And now we're providing students with an on-campus health care plan that's covered by their existing tuition. This is what every college should be doing. We know one that actually is. Conference Carolina is where tradition is unmatched and excellence is earned daily. Our 13 current member institutions work hard daily to build champions in body, mind, and soul. It's who we are. Please visit conferencecarolinas.com to learn more about Conference Carolinas. And the Conference Carolinas digital network powered by Blueframe is the official digital network of Conference Carolinas. It will encompass all original programming from the conference. The Conference Carolinas digital network is available online at conferencecarolinasdn.com, as well as on platforms such as Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, and Apple TV. Mobile devices including iPhone, iPad, and Android will also work with the default web browser. I've got them on my TV at home. Learn more and start watching now on conferencecarolinasdn.com. Wakefield, Tootin, and Shuck to come to the plate for the Patriots here in the bottom of the second inning. Tanner among the conference leaders in batting with a 409 average, 44 runs scored, 16 doubles, a homer, 34 RBIs, and a 472 on base percentage. As we mentioned earlier this year, Wakefield had a 20-game hitting streak where he just blistered the ball. Ground.
Ground ball to short. Guzman up. And Wakefield is retired for out number one. Lex Tootin will stand in. Graduate student batting 336. 38 runs scored, 10 doubles, 3 homers, 39 RBIs, and a 402 on base percentage. Tootin, a local product out of Johnsonville, South Carolina, Johnsonville High School. Earned his undergraduate degree at North Greenville University, also in the Conference Carolinas, before transferring to FMU at the last semester break to complete his final year as a graduate student. Tootin has been a good find for head coach Art Nabinet. He spent most of his time in left field, but also has caught about one of every three weekend series games. Also played a couple games at first base. This will be Bowen's 30th pitch as there is one out here in the bottom of the second. Check swing. Inside, count goes to three balls and a strike. 330 down the lines here at Cormel Field, 375 to the power alleys, and 400 to straightaway center field. As we mentioned before, no wind to speak of tonight. And Tootin draws a one out walk. Second free pass issued by Bowen tonight. And Isaac Shuck, the catcher, will stand in. Shuck batting 253, 21 runs scored, three doubles, a homer, 18 RBIs, and a 358 on base percentage. Shuck in his first year as a Patriot out of Reno, Nevada, transfer from Butte College. Braves have only allowed 49 stolen bases in their 42 contests. Good crowd on hand for the Friday night contest. A key series as this is the next to last conference series for the Patriots. They will finish their regular season next week against King University. As I mentioned, the Patriots fourth in the conference standings, Braves second but only two losses separate those teams. Braves at 17 and seven, Belmont Abbey at 15 and eight, Francis Marion at 15 and nine, Erskine in fifth at 15 and 12. Two-two pitch, chopped foul. As we mentioned coming into the game, Bowen's strikeout to walk, 68 to 17. So far tonight he has one punch out and has issued two free passes. And he was the team's closer, but forced into starting duty 
This is his second start of the season. Tooting the runner at first, with one out here in the bottom of the second. Bowen chases him back. Again, Shuck fall. Fouls off the two strike pitch. Runners going. Pitch is high and outside. The throw down in time to nab Tootin. Count is now full on the batter, but Tootin is out. With the caught stealing. First time Tootin has been caught stealing this year. That was his third attempt. He was two for two, now two for three. So Shuck will bat with full count. The base is empty now and two outs. Inside for ball four. So an unfortunate turn of events for the Patriots and that Tootin could have been on second now with one out. But be that as it may, Shuck is at first with two outs for Bill Hanna. Senior center fielder batting 299. 34 runs scored, five doubles, three homers, 24 RBIs, and a 371 on base percentage. All three of Hanna's homers have come since last week's midweek. Come from behind victory over Lander in which he went yard in the bottom of the 12th. Hits a ground ball, funny hop to Guzman, but he's able to handle it. Goes the short way to second for the force out, and the Patriots are done here in the bottom of the second. Played two full innings, no score between Francis Marion and UNCP. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Compassion and commitment have made you a great nurse. Now it's time to take the next step in your career and earn an advanced practice degree. Francis Marion University Nursing is led by great nurses who take teaching seriously. We're recognized as a national center of excellence for teaching nurses. Francis Marion University, teaching matters here. Guzman, Littleton, and then back to the order, top of the order, and Jane here in the third inning for UNC Pembroke. Again, we'll play two tomorrow, starting at 2 o'clock here on Cormel Field at Sparrow Stadium. We'll have all the action for you here on the Patriots Sports Network. Want to send some congratulations to several members of the Patriot baseball program who this week were named to the Conference Carolina's Spring Academic All-Conference team. J.D. Bailey, Harrison Bigham, Adam Cresswell, Tyler Davis, Lenio Gonzalez, Evan Jackson, Alexander Jurgensen, Carson Jones, Darius Nobles, Corey Paulson, Daniel Twitty, and Bailey Wendell. Congratulations to those members of the Patriot baseball team who made the conference all academic team for 2022 to make that team you have to be a junior or senior and have a 3.25 GPA for your entire career at Francis Marion Wellington Guzman will stand in the senior is batting 226 36 runs scored 
six doubles, 11 homers, 37 RBIs, and a 335 on base percentage. Guzman, 6'4", 200 pounds out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Transfer from Winston-Salem State University. Patriots softball team is in the house tonight. They will be traveling to Belmont Abbey for a doubleheader tomorrow, 1 o'clock first pitch. Check the website for links to live stats and live video for that doubleheader. Two two grounded in the hole. A nice play by Janos. The throw will not be in time. That'll go as an infield single for Guzman. Braves have their first base hit of the contest. That'll bring up the catcher, Garrett Littleton. Junior batting 240. 27 runs scored, three doubles, no homer, 16 RBIs, and a 412 on base percentage. Guzman 8 for 10 in the stolen base category this season. That is bunted in the air, but it gets down. Hardy will make the play. Throw is into the runner, gets away from Nobles, and the runners will advance to second and third. That will see how that one is scored. So they've scored that a bunt single for Littleton and then an air on the pitcher Hardy on the throw allowing the runners to advance as Littleton would have beaten even a good throw. This is the top of the order in Christian Jane. He's 0 for 1, a ground out to third. But this time he bats with runners at second and third and nobody out. Ground ball to Wakefield. They will concede the run for an out. And the Braves take a 1-0 lead as Guzman scores on the ground out by Jane. RBI number 36 of the season for Jane, and that'll bring up Gage Hammonds. Hammonds, a strikeout victim in the first inning. Bats with Littleton, the runner, at third, and only one out here in the top of the third inning. Braves have just taken a 1-0 lead. Chopper that Maddox lost for a second in the sun. The throw does retire Hammonds, but again on the play. Littleton scores, and the Braves take a 2-0 lead. So back-to-back -back RBI ground outs as the Braves take advantage of the throwing air by Hardy. It's RBI number 36 of the season as well for Hammonds. And Ethan Ott, the DH, will now bat with two out and nobody on. Ott a strikeout victim in the first inning.
And Ott is retired on strikes for out number three. But the Braves score a couple of runs. We head to the bottom of the third. The Braves lead FMU 2-0. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Bob in the third inning here at Cormel Field at Sparrow Stadium. Patriots trail UNC Pembroke two to nothing. Top of the lineup due up Hardy, Yanos, and Maddox. Braves have just scored a pair of runs in the top of the inning. Helped somewhat by throwing air as one of the runs was unearned. Hardy one for one, extended his hitting streak to 20 games with a first inning single. As we thought, saw with Maddox in the top of the frame, the sun will create somewhat of a problem on choppers to the left side to third or short and possibly on line drive to the right to the left fielder as it sets behind the stadium here. Swing and a miss, and Hardy is down on strikes for the initial out here in the bottom of the third. Nafis Giannis will bat next. Giannis 0 for 1 tonight. 5'8", 170-pound junior out of Sanford, Florida, Lake Sumter State College. One of three switch hitters in the lineup for the Patriots tonight. Gonzalez and Tootin being the other ones. Lifted in the air to left. Dixon fights the sun but is able to make the catch. And Janos has flown out to left twice here in the first three innings. Todd Maddox will bat next. Maddox 0 for 1, grounded out to the first baseman. His season average now at 4.05. Reigning Conference Carolina's Player of the Week.
Kind of even at one and one. Maddox and Hardy came into the contest tonight, tied for the conference lead and hits with 68, obviously. Maddox has one, or Hardy has one more tonight to go to 69, and Maddox grounds out to shortstop. Patriots go one, two, three in the bottom of the third inning. UNCP leads FMU 2-0. This is the Patriots Sports Network. If there's a prettier place to go to college in the springtime, we don't know about it. Of course, we think it's the place to be all year round. Francis Marion University. Unparalleled beauty, unbeatable affordability, education that will last a lifetime. Francis Marion golf team will play in the Southland Conference Championship Tournament Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in McKinney, Texas. The Patriots are the top seed in the tournament. Of course, the FMU golf program competes at the NCAA Division I level. The winner of the tournament will receive the automatic berth to the NCAA Division I tournament. You can follow the action from the Southland Conference Tournament through live stats. Links are on the webpage at fmupatriots.com. Dixon, Harris, and Faulkner to bat for the Braves here in the fourth inning against Halton Hardy. Dixon is 0 for 1 with a second inning strikeout. Chopper to short in between. So Dixon reaches on the ground ball single through the left side. As Janos got caught in between hops and was also battling the sun. Trent Harris, third baseman, will stand in. He'll look to bunt, but rolls it foul down the third baseline. Harris 0 for 1, grounded out to second base, his first trip to the plate. Again, squares to bunt. It's in the dirt. He takes for ball one. Again, Harris bunts foul. And so most likely he will now have to swing away at one ball, two strikes. With Dixon the runner at first and nobody out here in the top of the fourth inning.
And the count is run full to the Braves' third baseman. Only the third, or excuse me, the second three-ball count that Hardy has faced tonight. First one resulted in a walk to Faulkner back in the second inning. Chases Dixon back. A better throw might have had a chance to pick him that time. Dixon has eight stolen bases this season. He is going. Ground ball to short. Janos the second for one. And they get the lead runner on a close play. So Spencer Faulkner will stand in. Sophomore walked his first trip, as I mentioned a few minutes ago. Faulkner, 5'9", 195 pounds out of Rollsville, North Carolina and Rollsville High School. He also looks to bunt but takes outside for ball one. Want to thank Todd Anderson and Morgan Shaheen in the UNC Pembroke Sports Information Office for helping us gather all the information for this weekend series. Special shout out to Tony Chavis, my buddy up at the UNC Pembroke campus. Hardy misses that pitch, count goes to two balls and no strikes. Right down Palmetto Street, four called strike one. High chopper. This one could this one's gonna be trouble. Janos feels but has no play on anyone. So Faulkner with the infield single puts runners at first and second and one out now. Blake Henson will now bat with pair of Braves runners on base. Freshman grounded back to Hardy in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. So after breezing through the first two innings, Hardy has run his pitch count up to 50 now as he works here in the fourth inning. Line drive, left center field, that's a base hit. Harris is being waved, he will score. And it's an RBI single for Henson. Braves lead three to nothing. RBI 18 of the year for Henson. And UNC Pembroke has runners now second and third with one out for Wellington Guzman. 
Guzman singled, scored a run back in the third inning. Ground ball to Llanos. Again, they will concede the run as Guzman is out at first. But Faulkner scores run number four and Henson moves to third on the play. Littleton stands in one for one with a run scored back in the third inning. Reached on a bunt single. Went to second when the throw to first was wild. Came around to score. Hardy's now heading the count, one ball, two strikes. Henson gets his lead off of third. That one in the dirt and gets by Shuck. Henson will score run number five on the wild pitch. So the Braves now lead 5-0, two runs in the third and three here in the fourth. Count now 2-2 two and two to Littleton. Fouls that one off over toward the field house. Called strike three. And Littleton is retired for out number three, but the Braves pick up three runs, head to the bottom of the fourth. UNC Pembroke leads Francis Marion 5-0. This is the Patriots Sports Network.
Gonzalez, Nobles, and Wakefield, the meat of the Patriot lineup, to bat here in the fourth. Francis Marion trails Pembroke, five nothing. Gonzalez walked in the first inning. Count quickly 3-0 to Gonzalez. And it's a four-pitch walk for Gonzalez. A good start for the Patriots here in the fourth. Nobles follows a, followed a Gonzalez walk in the first inning with a strikeout. So he is 0 for 1, season average now at 396. The fourth walk issued by Bowen. Again, congratulations to the FMU tennis teams as they both defeated Southern Wesleyan today in Central South Carolina. The women winning 7-0, the men 6-1. And they will close out their regular season tomorrow at North Greenville. Matches begin at noon in Tigerville, South Carolina. And Bowen will get a visit from the UNC Pembroke bench as he has missed on his first five pitches here in the fourth inning. Pitch count is up to 55, 30 of which have either found the strike zone or been put into play. Count to Nobles, now evened at two and two as he fouls it into the screen. Hey, 
Line drive into left field. That's a base hit. And the Patriots have their first two batters on here in the fourth inning. Nobles extends his modest hitting streak to 13 games. Actually, not too modest. That's a good hitting streak, 13 games. Tanner Wakefield, one of the leading hitters in the conference, will come to the plate now with two on and no outs. Wakefield grounded to short in the second inning. Big hole on the left side for Wakefield to shoot at as Guzman, the shortstop, jockeys back and forth to try and hold Gonzalez close at second as does the second baseman, Faulkner. Big cut, and he fouls it back over the press box here at Sparrow Stadium in the Griffin Athletic Complex. Complex houses the FMU Softball Stadium and Hartzler Soccer Field in addition to the baseball stadium. We are right across the street from the FMU main campus. Fastball outside corner, catches it and the count now is one and two. Bowen and catcher Littleton get the sign from the Braves dugout and check their wristbands. And up comes the 2-2 pitch. Fly ball pretty well hit the left center field. Jane tracking will make the catch, and it's not deep enough for anybody to advance. And Lex Tootin now will bat with one out. And Gonzalez still the runner at second. Nobles at first. Tootin walked and was caught stealing in the bottom of the second inning. Tootin has hit safely in his last five contests. That one is lined over the second baseman's head. That's a base hit. Gonzalez is being waved home. Throw will come in to second, and the Patriots are on the board. RBI single for Tootin. Sends his hitting streak to six games. Noble stops at second. And Isaac Shuck will come to the plate. Catcher walked in his first trip. Ground ball back up the middle. That will get through for a base hit. Nobles is being waved. Throw comes home, but it is cut off, and the Patriots trail 5-2. to two. The RBI single back up the middle for Shuck. 
Tutin goes to second, and Nobles comes around to score. RBI number 19 of the season for Isaac. And Bill Hanna now comes to the plate representing the tying run. And we say that only because he's homered three times in the last five contests. Lake City native. Transfer from USC Sumter in his third year as a Patriot, taking advantage of his extra COVID year. Looks to bunt for a hit, but takes it outside for ball one. Will Hardy in the top of the lineup will be next. Hardy not bunting that time, rips it foul, but it's just outside the third base bag. One one pitch is in there for called strike two. Tootin the Patriot runner at second. Isaac Shuck at first with one out here in the bottom of the fourth as the Patriots have broken through with a pair of runs. Hannah's able to hold up on the outside pitch. Nice stop by Littleton. Keep it from going to the backstop. That pitch is high and outside, and the count is run full. Would not think that the runners will be going here, given the base runners. But either way, Bowen's got to bring something near to the plate here to entice Hannah to swing. Full count pitch up coming, two on, one out, bottom of the fourth inning. Time requested by Han at the plate as Bowen took a little too long for the late city native. Three two pitch, fly ball. That's going to get out of play over by the field house. Bowen now up to 73 pitches as he works here in the fourth inning. Get a good shot there of Bill Hanna, center fielder from Lake City, South Carolina. 3-2 pitch again. Ground ball back up the middle. That's going to be a tough play. It'll get through for a base hit. Here comes Tootin, he will score, and the Patriots are now within five to three. RBI single by Hannah. RBI number 25 of the season. On the play, Shuck able to go all the way around to third. Faulkner tried to make the only play he could, a barehanded stop behind the bag, and the high chopper was just too hot to handle. So it's back to the top of the lineup now. One out, runners on the corners, and the Patriots are within five to three. Hardy, one for two, first inning single, and strikeout in the third. And Hardy 
to this point leads the conference in base hits with 69 now after his first inning single. Does have a hole to shoot fourth on the right side as the first baseman Hammonds will hold on Bill Hanna. Hanna not going on that pitch. Hanna does have four stolen bases, if that's something Art Nabinet wants to put into play here. Off-speed pitch finds the outside corner, and it is now one ball, two strikes. Nefisianos, shortstop, is in the on-deck circle. Throw to first, but Hannah is back in plenty of time. Again, Hannah is chased back, but the throw to first is wild. Shuck will score. And Hannah goes down to second on the failed pickoff attempt. So the Patriots get a gift there. As Shuck throws on the failed pickoff attempt at first. And Hannah now down at second. Potential tying run for Will Hardy. So each pitcher has not exactly helped themselves this evening as they each have a throwing error that led to at least one run. Line drive off the second baseman's glove into center field. Hannah will score easily, and the score is tied at five. So after trailing five nothing, Coming into this inning, the Patriots have gotten off the deck and scored five times to knock the game. And there's still only one out. Hardy now the runner at first. Janos at the plate. See if Nafis can try somebody other than Dixon in left as he's flown out twice to the Braves left fielder. Looks to bunt. Puts it down. <laughs> Bowen thought that the third baseman was going to handle it and it'll go for an infield single so some miscommunication between Bowen and the third baseman and the Patriots have runners at first and second and one out and FMU has batted around here in the bottom of the fourth inning Todd Maddox the ninth Patriot to come to the plate he is 0 for 2 and will bat with a chance to put the Patriots ahead that was really an unusual play as it looked like Bowen was going to field the bunt. And then he peeled off, but the third baseman wasn't there to pick it up. There is some stirring down in the Francis Marion bullpen as there is action in the UNC Pembroke bullpen. 
One out, Hardy the runner at second. Janos at first, good speed on the base pass for the Patriots. And Todd Maddox at the plate. And the one thing we've been mentioning all night is Bowen, a former closer, pushed into starting duty, now up to 82 pitches as he works here in the fourth inning. Maddox fooled on that offering, and the count now no balls and two strikes. Lenio Gonzalez, the DH, is in the on-deck circle. Down now two and two. Two two pitch upcoming from Darren Bowen to Todd Maddox. Line drive, shallow right field. That is going to be snagged by the right fielder. A shoot top catch for Hint by Henson for out number two. Henson a little unsure how he was going to play that one, but was able to make the shoestring catch to retire Maddox. And Gonzalez will bat for the second time this inning. Led off the inning with a walk and came around to score the first run. Bowen getting the signal from the Braves dugout and checking his wristband as Gonzalez will finally stand in. Gonzalez, no official at bats so far. A pair of walks. Fouls that one off at the plate. And that pitch hits Gonzalez, and the bases are now loaded. So Darius Nobles will come to the plate for the second time. Big cut by Nobles with the bases loaded, comes up empty. Nobles singled and scored a run earlier this inning. He's one for two. Patriots now up to seven base hits. Hardy the runner at third, Janos at second, and Gonzalez at first.
Noble's base hit earlier this inning is sending his hitting streak to 13 games. Six hits, a walk, a hit batter, and a throwing error on a failed pickoff attempt have allowed the Patriots to not the score at five here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And the count now three and one to the Patriot first baseman. Nobles again leads the Patriots in homers and RBIs with 12 long balls and 47 runs driven in. Sun has officially set and is not in a factor any longer with the fielders. Ground ball hard to shortstop. Guzman is able to go the short way to Faulkner at second for the force out to end the inning. But Francis Marion scores five times to tie the score. We head to the fifth inning. Things all tied up at five between Francis Marion and UNC Pembroke. This is the Patriot Sports Network. Carolinas. Conference Carolinas is committed to aligning with businesses that share our common values and like us stray, strive to obtain excellence and virtue in all endeavors. We work hard to make our corporate par partnerships a truly beneficial relationship through mutually agreed upon customization that will lead to unparalleled exposure. Conference Carolinas would like to thank our current corporate partners, Barnes & Noble College, Buffkin Bayer, Cambria Hotel Greenville, Championship Awards Guys, Formetco, Herf Jones, Hometown Ticketing, Marriott Spartanburg, McGriff Insurance Services, McMillan Pasden Smith, Plus Inc., Score Shots, SCS by Floor Action, Inc., Sidearm Sports, Southern Recognition LLC, South State Bank, Ticket Smarter, Toledo Ticket Technologies, and Vernon Graphics and Promotions. New game as we bat here in the fifth inning. Top of the order, Jane, Hammonds, and Ott to come to the plate for UNC Pembroke as Halton Hardy has new life on the mound for the Patriots. Jane 0 for 2 with a pair of ground outs. Came into the contest batting 342. That one is fouled at the plate and Shuck could not hang on to it. Hardy now at 65 pitches, 43 of which have either found the strike zone or been put into play. Swung on a missed at the plate. Shuck will have to throw down as it was in the dirt. He does. And there's one down here in the top of the first. Gage Hammonds. First baseman will stand in. 0 for 3. Strikeout and an RBI ground out in the third. Hammonds out of Chadburn, North Carolina. Action in the Patriot bullpen. We just can't tell who it is from our angle here in the press box. Possibly Reese Kleinhelter is my sus. Trusty sidekick's best guess. Go, 
It looks like Will Harris, freshman right-hander, continues to warm up in the UNC Pembroke bullpen. Hall of Fame FMU head coach Gerald Griffin in the house tonight. Coach Griffin, for who the athletic complex is named, started the Patriot baseball program back in 1973. There's a ground ball, base hit through the left side for Hammonds. The Braves have a one out base runner. Coach Griffin sitting behind the backstop behind home plate along with one of his former players, Tim Ward. Ethan Ott, the DH, will stand in. He's 0 for 2. He is a strikeout victim both times in the first and third innings. Ground ball, that's through the right side for a base hit. And UNC Pembroke has runners at first and second with one out here in the fifth. Left fielder Bobby Dixon will stand in. He is one for two, strikeout and a single. And head coach Art Nabinett will make the long walk to the mound. We'll see if it's for a change or just for a conversation and encouragement. Identical line scores for both teams at this point. Five runs, seven hits, and one error. So when Abinett will stick with his sophomore right-hander. Hardy with seven hits allowed, five runs, four of which are earned. One walk, six strikeouts to this point. And that pitch hits Dixon. So the bases are now loaded with one out. And Trent Harris, third baseman, will stand in. Harris 0 for 2. Ground out in the second. Reached on a fielder's choice and came around to score a run in the fourth inning. His season average now at 3.09. Does have a couple of homers, 22 RBIs on the season. Of course, all this started after the leadoff man of the inning. Jane was fanned. Single by Hammond, single by Ott, and hit batter to Dixon. Have loaded the bases. You got to think this is probably Hardy's last batter if he cannot retire. Harris. Two zero pitch. Swung on and fouled at the plate. Home plate umpire Brian Miller will walk the ball out to Hardy to give Trent Harris a chance to recover after fouling that ball off his foot. The high point university transfer out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay. 
2-1 pitch. Fly ball right field. Chasing Hardy back. That'll be deep enough to score Hammonds from third. And on the play, Ott moves to third. So the sacrifice fly by Harris puts the Braves back on top, 6-5. To And Spencer Faulkner, the second baseman, will bat with runners on the corners now and two outs. Faulkner one for one, a walk and a single with a run scored. Runner bluffs from first, but Dixon does not go. Pitches ball one. Runner is going this time. Throw down is in time. Nice play by Wakefield at second to make the catch and the tag all in one motion. So Dixon is caught stealing to end the inning, but the Braves pick up the go-ahead run on a sack fly by Harris. Head to the bottom of the fifth, UNC Pembroke six, Francis Marion five. This is the Patriot Sports Network. The Small Falls Club is a fundraising arm of the Francis Marion University Athletic Department and it supplies assistance to all 14 intercollegiate sports. On behalf of the student athletes at Francis Marion, I would like to thank all those who are members of the Small Falls Club for their support. Thank you. 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 New pitcher for the Braves as Francis Marion comes to bat in the bottom of the fifth inning. 6'1", 175 pound freshman right-hander Will Harris out of Goldsboro, North Carolina. Graduate of Rosewood High School. Harris no record. This will be his sixth appearance of the season, all in relief, a 1.93 ERA. He's thrown nine in the third innings, allowed 11 hits. Two runs both earned, one walk, and 11 strikeouts. So better than a strikeout per inning. And he will face Wakefield, Tootin, and Shuck in the fifth inning. Patriots again trailing 6-5. Final numbers for Darren Bowen. Four innings pitched, 93 pitches, seven hits allowed, five runs, all earned, four walks, two strikeouts. Wakefield 0 for 2. Fouls that one over toward Hartzler soccer field. Wakefield grounded to short in the second. Flew out to the center fielder, Jane, in left center in the long fourth inning. So Harris quickly ahead in the count now. No balls, two strikes. On, 
Wakefield out of Gainesville, Georgia. His fourth year as a Patriot, already earned his undergraduate degree. Product of King Ridge, Kings Ridge Christian School. In the dirt, and the count has now run full. Braves plated their run in the top of this inning without the benefit of a hit. Excuse me, they did have two hits. And then the hit batter and the sack fly. Payoff pitch up coming from Harris to Wakefield. Just low, ball four. So the leadoff Patriot is on via free pass. Same way that the fourth inning began for Francis Marion. And Lex Tootin, the left fielder, will stand in. He is one for one, walked in the second and was caught stealing, and then had an RBI single in the fourth inning. Tootin now with 40 runs batted in this season. His season average up to 340. Looks to bunt, misses it, the runner is going. And Wakefield is out, attempting to steal or on the bunt and run. So it goes a caught stealing. Only the second time that Wakefield's been caught this year. He's now eight for 10. And Tootin is in a no ball, one strike hole. I guess you could call that a, a bunt and run as Tootin attempted to bunt, could, could not make contact, and Littleton's throw to Guzman was in time to nab Wakefield. That one is lined right back to the mound. And Harris picks it about six inches off the ground. The catcher Isaac Shuck will bat with the bases empty and two outs. Shuck one for one, a walk in the second and an RBI single in the fourth. Two teams will play a doubleheader tomorrow. Two o'clock is the first pitch. If you're here in Florence, come out to the ballpark. If not, we'll have the action for you here on the Patriot Sports Network. Check swing. Did not go, says base umpire Michael Brody. And the count is run three balls, no strikes. That one is right down Irby Street for called strike one. That one is lined between the first baseman Hammonds and the bag. 
It'll go down in the right field corner. Shuck will have extra bases. And he stands a second now with a two out double. Bill Hanna come to the plate. Hanna is one for two, reached on a fielder's choice grounder and had an RBI single. And his threatening speed on the base pass also resulted in a failed pickoff attempt in the fourth inning that helped lead to a run. Bats here with two outs and Shuck representing the tying run. Hit in the air to center field. Jane tracking slightly over into left center. will make the catch for out number three. So the Patriots pick up a two out extra base hit, but Shuck is stranded at second. We head to the sixth inning. UNC Pembroke leads FMU six to five. This is the Patriot Sports Network. Francis Marion University has always put its students first because the very best college education must be both meaningful and affordable. We've frozen tuition for three straight years. We've expanded our programs, opening the door to a variety of rewarding careers. Our campus has been recognized as the safest in the state. And now we're providing students with an on-campus health care plan that's covered by their existing tuition. This is what every college should be doing. We know one that actually is. New pitcher for your Patriots. Fifth year senior right hander Reese Kleinhelter out of Jasper, Indiana. Transfer from the University of Southern Indiana. The final numbers on Halton Hardy, the Patriots starter. Five innings pitched, 79 pitches, seven hits allowed, six runs, five of those earned, one walk, six strikeouts. Kleinhelter on the season. He will be making his 14th appearance all in relief. A 4-1 record, two saves, a 1.25 ERA that leads the squad. He has thrown 36 innings, 29 hits allowed, seven runs, five earned, 10 walks, 25 strikeouts. Opponents are batting 213 against him. He will face 6, 7, and 8 in the UNC Pembroke lineup. That's Faulkner, Henson, and Guzman. Both these teams ranked in the latest NCBWA Southeast Regional Poll. Pembroke was seventh, excuse me, sixth, and the Patriots ninth. I believe that the initial NCA Southeastern Regional Poll will come out next week. That's the initial one from the NCA Raiders. And the one that determines who makes the regional tournament at the end of the year. Seven teams make the Southeast Regional Tournament out of the three conferences, Conference Carolinas, South Atlantic Conference, and the Peach Belt Conference. Second baseman Spencer Faulkner will lead off the sixth inning for UNC Pembroke. He's one for one, a walk and a single with a run scored.
Ground ball back up the middle under Klein Hilter's glove. Wakefield with the acrobatic da 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 play from behind the second base bag to nip Faulkner for out number one. That one had base hit back up the middle, ticketed all over it. But Wakefield with the Derek Jeter jump and throw from behind the second base bag. Blake Henson is one for two, ground out and an RBI single. That is rocketed right at Nobles, but he knocks it down and beats him to the bag for out number two. And that'll bring up Wellington Guzman. Shortstop to bat with the bases empty and two outs. Guzman one for two, a single and a run scored in the third and an RBI ground out in the fourth. Off speed pitch misses outside, evens the count at one and one. Big swing and a miss by the shortstop, but he comes up empty. Two-two pitch, popped in the air foul over by the field house. Gets out of play, count will stay at two and two. Again, can't overstress the importance of this series. Final conference standings, the Braves in second place. Patriots in fourth, but only separated by two games. And the count has run full to Brave shortstop. Payoff pitch is fouled back to the screen. And we'll do it all over again. Swing and a miss, and Kleinhelter, with the little help from his friends, sets the Braves down one, two, three in the sixth. Head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Braves lead your Patriots six to five. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Compassion and commitment have made you a great nurse. Now it's time to take the next step in your career and earn an advanced practice degree. Francis Marion University Nursing is led by great nurses who take teaching seriously. We're recognized as a national center of excellence for teaching nurses. Francis Marion University, teaching matters here.
Top of the order for the Patriots here in the sixth inning. Hardy, Janos, and Maddox. If anybody should reach, Gonzalez. Will Hardy, two for three. A pair of singles, a strikeout, an RBI. Has extended his hitting streak to 20 games. Equaling the fifth longest in program history. And for the first time, he will face right-hander Will Harris. And just if you're wondering, the longest hitting streak in Patriot history, 34 games by shortstop Greg Phelps during the 2007 and 2008 seasons. After that 30 game streak by Michael Bartell in 1988 and 89, a 25 game streak by Jerry Honeycutt in 2001, 24 games by Rich Kirstead in 1990. As Hardy sends that down the left field line, three people giving chase. And a tremendous catch by the third baseman, Harris, who then flips over the railing into foul territory. And Todd Anderson, we'll see if we can clip that highlight for you to send, as that certainly could be an SC top 10 candidate for this evening. So the acrobatic catch on the foul pop by Harris retires Hardy for the first out here in the sixth. Finishing up the hitting streaks, 24 games by Rich Kirstead, catcher in 1990, and then 20 game streaks by Gage Taylor in 2018, and then earlier this year also by Tanner Wakefield. Janos is one for three, a couple of flyouts and a single. Popped in the air, shallow left. That will get down for a base hit as no one could get to it. So Giannis has his second hit, a little Texas leaguer into left field. Todd Maddox will stand in, the third baseman, 0 for 3. Ground out to the first baseman, ground out to shortstop, and a fly ball to the right fielder. More of a line drive that Henson was able to pick off his shoe tops. Maddox came into tonight, tied for the conference lead in base hits. He has been surpassed now by his teammate, Will Hardy. Janos, good speed at first. And Harris chases him back. But Maddox has shown the ability to go the opposite way, so the fact that they are holding Janos on creates a hole on the right side. Maddox way out in front of that offering. Count now, no balls and two strikes.
Winsboro native stays alive by fouling that one into the screen. Maddox in his third year at Francis Marion. Played a couple seasons at USC Lancaster. Graduate of Blythewood High School. Popped in the air right side, foul territory. First baseman Ham is over into the coaching box. We'll make the catch for out number two. So Lenio Gonzalez, the DH, will bat with two down, and Yano still the runner at first. Gonzalez yet to record an official at bat tonight. He has walked twice and been hit by a pitch, has scored a run. Certainly has helped his on-base percentage. That one is chopped foul on the right side. Fastball outside corner, and Gonzalez is now down in the count. One ball, two strikes. Ronis, Janos, the runner from first, is going. Popped into shallow center. Jane with the long run, makes the nice running catch in shallow left center. He had a long way to go to get that one. But he does retire Gonzalez for out number three. The Patriots strand a base runner. We head to the seventh. UNC Pembroke leads FMU 6-5. to five. This is the Patriots Sports Network. Top of the seventh here in Florence. 
nine, one, and two to bat for UNC Pembroke. That's Littleton, Jane, and Hammonds. Second inning of work for Reese Kleinhelter on the mound for the Patriots. So the Patriots starter Hardy goes five. The Pembroke starter Bowen goes four. We'll see how the relief pitchers do as it's always important in the three game series, how early you have to go to your bullpen and how much you have to burn them in the opening contest. Garrett Littleton, the catcher, will bat. He is one for two, a bunt single and a strikeout. And scored a run in the third inning. Nice pitch by Kleinhelter, and he's ahead in the count. No balls and two strikes. And we'll play two tomorrow, beginning at 2 o'clock. We'll have the action for you here on the Patriot Sports Network. Even better, come out to the ballpark, catch two. It's supposed to be nice weather, even a little warmer than it was today. Kleinhelter thought that was strike three, but home plate umpire Brian Miller thought otherwise. Action starting back up in the UNC Pembroke bullpen. Looks like senior lefty Layden Smith may be going to start warming. And after getting ahead, no balls, two strikes, and thinking he had little and struck out, the count has now run full for Reese Kleinhelter. Line drive center field. Hannah will not have a chance on that. And it's a leadoff single for the catcher. That flips the lineup back to the top for Christian Jane. Jane 0 for 3, a couple of ground outs and a strikeout. He does have an RBI. Jane out of... Fayetteville, North Carolina, came to UNC Pembroke by way of East Carolina University. He looks to bunt, but pulls it back and takes called strike one. Littleton, the catcher, does have a trio of stolen bases this season. He's three for five. That one misses low, count two and one. Francis Marine Athletics will hold its annual athletic gala on Monday night, beginning at six o'clock at the Performing Arts Center downtown here in Florence. They will award the MVP trophies and the third annual Frankie Awards. Find out who the team of the year is and who the male and female athletes of the year are, coach of the year, assistant coach of the year, among other awards. That will also be webcast here on the Patriot Sports Network. Line drive right center field, that's a base hit. 
cut off by Hardy, but not before Jane pulls into second with the double and Littleton into third. So a pair of hard hit balls by the Braves to open the seventh. First baseman Gage Hammonds will now bat. Hammonds one for three, single, a run scored, an RBI, in addition to a strikeout and a ground out. First pitch upcoming to Hammonds as Kleinhelter, Kleinhelter checks the runners. Off speed pitch is high and inside. Ball one. Littleton the runner at third. Jane the runner at second. Looks to be further action in the Patriot bullpen behind the bushes. Two zero pitch is in there for strike one. Hammonds lines that one into right field. That's going to get down for extra bases, and two runs will score. Goes all the way to the wall. Two-run double for Hammonds, and the Braves now lead 8-5. to five. RBI is 37-38 for Hammonds. And the DH, Ethan Ott. We'll come to the plate now. Ott one for three. A pair of strikeouts and a single. Braves the first to reach double digits and hits tonight. They now have 10. That one's queued off over toward the Patriot dugout. The count now is one ball, two strikes. They're the UNCP DH.
Chopper to Maddox at third, looks the runner back. Long throw across is high and off the mark, so that'll be a throwing error on the third baseman, allowing Ott to reach. Hammonds did have to stay at second, but they're now two on, no outs. And the cleanup man, Bobby Dixon, comes to the plate. Left fielder is one for two. Strikeout, single, and a hit by pitch. He looks to bunt, push it to third base. Good bunt. Maddox, nice play, and gets Dixon at first. So we'll credit Dixon with the sacrifice bunt. Moving Ott and Hammonds up a base. Nice play by Maddox as he had to come a long way to glove that and throw all in one motion. And... Trent Harris, third baseman, will bat with runners on second and third and only one out. Infield's going to come in to try and cut off a run at the plate. Harris is 0 for 2. Ground out to second, reached on a fielder's choice and scored in the fourth and then had a sacrifice fly that plated a run in the fifth. That was the go-ahead run that broke the 5-5 tie. Patriots need a strikeout, a pop-up, a comebacker to the mound, something along those lines right here. Klein Hilter's 0-1 pitch to Harris. Outside for ball one. That all-speed pitch misses for ball two. Other baseball action earlier today. King University defeated Chuan 8-4, and Erskine defeated Emmanuel 10-2. Only other contest is Belmont Abbey playing at Southern Wesleyan this evening. Kleinhelter has battled back to even the count at 2-2. Two -two. Patriots need to stop the bleeding here in the seventh. Trail Harris requests time at the plate. Two-two pitch. Low and the count has run full. Second baseman Spencer Faulkner is in the on-deck circle. Big pitch for Kleinhelter here. Again, the infield drawn in. 
Swing and a miss, balls in the dirt. They'll have to throw down. Shuck looks the runner back and retires Harris at first. So big strike out there for Kleinhelter as now there are runners on second and third with two outs for the aforementioned Faulkner. Faulkner will stand in, one for two, a walk, a single, run scored, and a ground out. His season average up a little bit from its starting 295. Off-speed pitch in there for called strike one. Faulkner's ground out in the fifth inning was against Kleinhelter. That was his first batter faced when he entered the game for Halton Hardy. Fly ball, shallow right field. That'll get down for a hit. Two runs will score. Just a little flare, and the throw to the infield gets away. Shuck will have to chase it down, and Faulkner will take second on the throwing air. So two RBIs for Faulkner. And the Braves have blown this one open now, leading 10 to 5. RBIs 28 and 29 for Faulkner on the season. And Blake Henson bats now with two outs and a runner at second. That one gets through Shuck to the backstop. That'll be scored a wild pitch, allowing Faulkner now to go to third. One ball, no strike pitch to Henson. Swing and a miss. Count is even at one and one. So the Braves led 5-0 heading to the bottom of the fourth. The Patriots scored five to tie it up. Braves scored one in the top of the sixth and now have plated four here in the seventh. Two-run double by Hammonds. Two-run single by Faulkner. Counting for those four runs. And so for the second time tonight, the Patriots face a five-run deficit. Swing and a miss. They'll have to throw down to first again, which they do. And Henson is retired on strikes for out number three. But the Braves push across four runs. They have doubled up the Patriots 10 fives. We head to the bottom of the seventh and time to stretch. This is the Patriots Sports Network. If there's a prettier place to go to college in the springtime, we don't know about it. Of course, we think it's the place to be all year round. Francis Marion University. Unparalleled beauty, unbeatable affordability, education that will last a lifetime.
Francis Marion University Athletics would like to thank the following sponsors. Adidas, Circle Park Behavioral Health Services, McLeod Regional Medical Center, Ken Jackson and Remax Professionals, Pepsi, McDonald's, Rains Hospitality, including Fairfield Inn, Spring Hill Suites, Courtyard by Marriott, Comfort Inn and Hyatt Place, King Cadillac Buick GMC, McLeod Sports Medicine, Chick-fil-A, State Farm and Agent Jim Stewart, Quincy Steakhouse, Little Caesars, La Quinta Inn and Suites, KFC and Arby's, Florence Toyota, The Waffle House, PD Electric Cooperative, Sparrow and Kennedy Tractor Supply, McCall Supply Inc., Western Sizzle and Steakhouse, State Credit Union, and Zaxby's. Will Harris, now the pitcher of record for UNC Pembroke, will face Nobles, Wakefield, and Tootin. Five, six, and seven in the Patriot order here in the bottom of the seventh as once again Francis Marion needs to rally from five down. We've done it once before. Let's see if we can do it again. Nobles one for three. That hit was a single in the fourth inning. He came around to score a run. Extended his hitting streak to 13 games. First pitch swinging, fouls it off. Fly ball, right field, pretty well hit. Henson going back to the track. Makes the catch in the middle of the warning track for out number one. Tanner Wakefield, 0 for 2, a ground out, a fly out, and a walk. Chopper over the third baseman's head. No, it's foul. He was able to make the stop on it as he stepped over the bag, but home plate umpire Brian Miller ruled it was in foul territory. Pretty close, but he had the best view in the house. Would have been an extremely tough play for Harris to make, but he's already dove over the left field wall or left field foul wall to make a catch of a foul pop, so anything's possible for the Braves third baseman. I've never seen that here. I've seen them hit the fence and flip over, but I've never seen anybody do a dive over the fence. Fly ball, right center field. Henson over and in. We'll make the catch for out number two. Lex Tootin will come to the plate. Base is empty, two outs for the Patriots here in the seventh.
Tootin spins out of the way of the first offering. He is one for two, walk, RBI single, and a line out. Swung on a miss, fouled into the catcher's mitts. Four out, number three. So the Patriots go one, two, three in the seventh. We head to the eighth. UNC Pembroke leads Francis Marion 10 to five. This is the Patriots Sports Network. New pitcher for the Patriots in the eighth inning. Senior right-hander Corey Polson out of Bel Air, Maryland. Transfer from Maryland Eastern Shore University. Polson a righty. Will be making his 16th appearance of the year, all in relief, no record. 6.92 ERA, 13 innings pitched. 20 hits allowed, 16 runs, 10 of those earned, 8 walks, 18 strikeouts. Final numbers for Reese Kleinhelter. Two innings pitched, 45 pitches, 4 hits, 4 runs, 2 of those earned, no walks, 3 strikeouts. Bolson will face Guzman, Littleton, and Jane. Eight, nine, and one in the Braves lineup here in the eighth inning. Guzman one for three, single, a run scored, and an RBI ground out. Struck out in his other at bat as Polson pours his first offering across the straight for called strike one. And the Patriots came in having won 13 of 15. The Braves had won five of their last eight.
Popped in the air, foul. That's going to get out of play over by the field house. Nobles gave chase and just had to watch it fly away. One two pitch just misses. Count even at two and two. The Braves 10 hits on 11, 10 runs on 11 hits with one air. Your Patriots five runs on nine hits with three miscues. Line drive center field, that's a base hit for Guzman. He's gonna try for two and slide in safely as he legged out a double. So a hustle double by Guzman to lead off the eighth inning. So Garrett Littleton will stand in with Guzman on second, no outs. Littleton two for three, a pair of singles. A couple runs scored. He bunts, good bunt. The sacrifice will work and move Guzman to third. Second sacrifice bunt successfully by the Braves tonight. So Guzman stands now at third with less than two outs for the top of the order in Jane. Christian is one for four. That hit being a double. Has scored a run and also driven in a run. Braves have only left three runners on base tonight, so they have taken care of business when they put runners on. Francis Marion has stranded eight tonight. That one way outside, but a good stop by Shuck. Line drive, left field, base hit. And the Braves lead 11 to five. Second RBI of the night for the leadoff man. And Jane now has 37 on the season. Gage Hammonds will come to the plate next. He is two for four, single, a double, two runs scored, three driven in. Runners going, throw down the shuck, is in time. Wakefield applies the tag and Jane is caught stealing. Fifth time that he's been nabbed this year, now 16 for 21. And Hammonds will bat now with the bases empty, two down. Line drive right at the shortstop, and Janos makes the catch for out number three. But the Braves add on a run. We head to the bottom of the eighth. UNC Pembroke leads 11-5. This is the Patriots Sports Network.
This is Conference Carolinas. Bottom of the eighth inning. Isaac Shuck, Bill Hannon, Will Hardy to face Will Harris. Freshman right-hander for UNC Pembroke. Shuck is two for two, a walk, a single, and double. Has driven in one run. Patriots down to their final six outs here. The opening game of this three-game Conference Carolina series. Check swing foul. I will think on the positive side, the Patriots do have two wins this season when they were trailing after seven innings. Ground ball back up the middle. Faulkner near the bag. Throws to retire Shuck. Bill Hanna will come to the plate. Center fielder is one for three. RBI single and a run scored back in the fourth inning. Chopper to short. Guzman can up, come up with it. That'll go as an air on the shortstop. And the Patriots have a one out base runner.
So pinch runner for Bill Hanna at first base will be Kobe Crepo, sophomore out of Lake Wiley, South Carolina. I didn't see whether Hanna injured himself running down the line or not. It's kind of unusual for him to be pinch run for. We'll have to wait and see after the game. He is down there in the dugout, but either way, Crepo will be the uh, pinch runner at second, and Will Hardy will bat. Hardy won two for four, a couple of singles, does have an RBI. As we mentioned earlier, Hardy extended his hitting streak to 20 games, equaling the fifth longest in program history. He will try and extend that tomorrow when the two teams play a doubleheader beginning at 2 o'clock. And that pitch hits Hardy. So the Patriots have a pair of base runners with one out. Good start here in the eighth. Patriots need a few more base runners, however, as they trail 11 to 5. Nafis Janos, 2 for 4. After flying out to the left fielder Dixon twice, he has singled in each of his last two at-bats, one of the bunt variety, the other two left field. Potential tie and run is still somewhere there on the bench down there. Patriots need a few more base runners, but they've got the right people at the plate. There is action down in the bullpen. As we mentioned, senior Southpaw Layden Smith warming. I take it that Smith is now their closer as Bowen has moved to the starting line, the starting rotation. One one pitch outside. Oh, catches the outside corner for strike two. And Yano swings and misses at that offering for the strikeout. Second strikeout for Harris since he entered the contest in the fifth inning. And Todd Maddox will come to the plate. Senior third baseman, unusual night for him, 0 for 4. Chance here to do some damage with a pair on and two outs in the eighth inning. Harris has not allowed a run in his three and two-thirds innings of work. Allowed just two hits. Cleanup man, Lineal Gonzalez, would bat next if Maddox can extend the inning. Good speed on the base pass for Patriots if Maddox can hit a gapper.
One, two pitch. Grounded foul. Popped up, left side, third baseman Harris in. Will make the catch in fair territory for out number three. Patriots strand a pair of base runners. We head to the ninth. UNC Pembroke leads Francis Marion 11-5. This is the Patriots Sports Network. The Sawfons Club is the fundraising arm of the Francis Marion University Athletic Department and it supplies assistance to all 14 intercollegiate sports. On behalf of the student athletes at Francis Marion, I would like to thank all those who are members of the Sawfons Club for their support. Thank you. 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 Francis Marion will employ its fourth pitcher of the evening as Chaz De Brule, 6'2", 180-pound sophomore lefty out of Kershaw, South Carolina, and Andrew Jackson High School will come to the mound. De Brule making his ninth appearance. He's made two starts this season. This is his seventh in relief. 0-1-1 record. Thrown 12 and one-third innings, allowed 18 hits, 15 runs, 13 of those earned, nine walks and 11 strikeouts. He will feet, face the meat of the UNC Pembroke lineup. Ott, Dixon, and Harris, 3-4-5. As the Patriots trail 11-5. Again, Braves led 5-0 heading to the bottom of the fourth. Francis Marion batted around, scored five times to tie it up. Then in the top of the fifth inning, sacrifice fly by Trent Harris gave the Braves the lead for good at 6-5, and they added four in the seventh and one in the eighth to take the six-run advantage. Again, earlier today, the Francis Marion men's and women's tennis teams both defeated Southern Wesleyan University. The men are ranked 47th this week in the ITA rankings. They won 6-1. to one. The women are ranked 74th, and they defeated the Warriors 7-0. They will conclude their regular season schedule tomorrow at North Greenville University. First serve is at noon there in Tigerville. And the Patriots softball team will play a doubleheader at Belmont Abbey College tomorrow beginning at 1 o'clock. Check the website, www.fmupatriots.com, for links to live stats and video for that twin bill. They will conclude their regular season on Monday with a road doubleheader at Erskine College. Again, first pitch will be 1 o'clock. And check the website for links to live stats and video. One one swung on a missed by Ott who is one for four, a single, and a run scored. One inning pitch for Corey Polson. He allowed a run, it was earned. Two hits, no walks, no strikeouts.
Again, the Braves have done a good job with getting their runners around. They've stranded only three. Your Patriots have stranded 10 tonight. High chopper to Maddox at third. He will make the play to retire Ott. Bobby Dixon, left fielder, will stand in next. He is one for two. That hit was a single, also been hit by pitch, and had a sacrifice bunt. Colby Crepo did stay in the game for the Patriots. He's playing center field now for FMU. First pitch strike by DeBrule. Again, want to thank the media center staff, Caleb Reeves, Princess Bigelow, Alicia Bulwer, Nyquan Jordan, and DeAsia Griffin for working the cameras tonight. Bringing you the webcast. High throw by Janos, but Noble's able to make the pick and apply the tag to retire Dixon. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Trent Harris. Harris 0 for 3. Did reach on a fielder's choice grounder in the fourth and scored a run. Also had a sacrifice fly to drive in one run, the go-ahead run in the top of the fifth. And that one is a swing and a miss with the bat sailing into the Braves dugout, that's about as far as I've ever seen a bat thrown here at Sparrow Stadium. We may have to get the tape measure out after the game to measure that one. And DeBrule jumps ahead, no balls and two strikes. Ground ball to Nobles, he knocks it down. And will run to the bag to beat Harris. And DeBrule pitches a one, two, three ninth. We head to the bottom of the ninth. You're telling me there is a chance, right? I've got a chance. There is a chance. Patriots trail 11 to 5. This is the Patriot Sports Network. Francis Marion University has always put its students first because the very best college education must be both meaningful and affordable. We've frozen tuition for three straight years. We've expanded our programs, opening the door to a variety of rewarding careers. Our campus has been recognized as the safest in the state. And now we're providing students with an on-campus health care plan that's covered by their existing tuition. This is what every college should be doing. We know one that actually is. New pitcher on for the bottom of the ninth for UNC Pembroke, Tyler Strickland. 6'7", 220 pound freshman right-hander out of Hope Mills, North Carolina. Spent a red shirt freshman year at UNC Wilmington before coming back home to UNC Pembroke. Strickland's numbers on the year. No record. This is his 10th appearance all in relief. A 6.75 ERA. He has thrown 13 and a third innings, allowed 10 hits, 11 runs, 10 of those earned, 8 walks and 13 strikeouts. He will face 4, 5, and 6 in the Patriot order. 
We need to go a lot further than that if we want to make this an interesting game. Gonzalez, Nobles, and Wakefield. Assistant coach Billy Henley takes his spot in the third base coaching box. Justin Henley in the first base box, and Lenio Gonzalez will stand in. The DH 0 for 1 tonight has walked twice, scored a run, was hit by a pitch, and flew out to center. As we mentioned earlier, Gonzalez, one of a group of Patriots that was named to the Conference Carolina Spring Academic All-Conference team earlier today. Millennial from Sumter and a product of Lakewood High School. Strickland readies for the 2-1 pitch. In there for call, strike two. Gonzalez steps out as Strickland takes a little too long for his liking. But now we're ready. Oh, no, we're not ready to go. As home plate umpire Brian Miller calls timeout. Two two pitch is lined to the shortstop. Guzman up, throws across, and Gonzalez is retired for out number one. That'll bring up Darius Nobles, the Greenville, North Carolina native, is one for four. Singled and scored a run in that five run outburst in the fourth inning for the Patriots. Nobles requests time at home plate as he steps out. Line drive right field, that'll be a base hit. Cut off quickly by Henson. Nobles digging for second and is in with a one out double. So Nobles with the, his second hit of the night. And the Patriots have reached double digits in hits. And for the 19th consecutive game, and Tanner Wakefield will come to the plate. Wakefield 0 for 3. Ground out, fly out, walk and fly out on his scorecard tonight.
Strickland pours his first offering to Wakefield in there for a strike. One one pitch is swung on a missed. And Wakefield is down on strikes for out number two. One to send out. Shout out to one of our Patriot fans, Mary Kay in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, watching the webcast tonight. Always glad to have her in. The Patriots down to their last out. Lex Tootin. Tootin one for three. RBI single and a run scored in that fourth inning, also walked. <laughs> Darius Nobles is the runner at second here with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. So give credit to the UNC Pembroke pitchers tonight. Other than that fourth inning, they have taken care of Maddox and Wakefield, certainly the two of the top hitters in the conference Carolinas. Maddox taking the caller 0 for 5 and Wakefield 0 for 4 with a walk. Tootin fists that one foul to stay alive. Hardy, Janos, and Shuck, all with a pair of hits for Francis Marion tonight. That one misses for ball one. And that one misses. Pembroke thought it might have been strike three, but Ryan Miller said ball two. And we continue. Two-two pitch here from Strickland. Grounded foul outside of first. Patriots down to their final strike. Isaac Shuck would bat next if the game continues.
And that is inside, and the count has run full now. Tootin is battled back. And that is called strike three. And the game is over. Final score, UNC Pembroke 11, Francis Marion five. Winning pitcher for the Braves, freshman righty reliever Will Harris. He improves to 1-0 on the season. Halton Hardy, sophomore righty starter for the Patriots, is the losing pitcher. He drops to 5-2. Time of the game was three hours and 16 minutes. Attendance here at Sparrow Stadium, 216. UNC Pembroke improves to 30 and 13 overall, 18 and 7 in the conference. Francis Marion loses for only the fourth time and only the third time in the last 16 games. FMU now 28 and 14 and 15 and 10 in conference play. Two teams will return to the field tomorrow. For a doubleheader beginning at 2 o'clock, we'll have the action for you here on the Patriots Sports Network. Reminder that both the tennis teams will be in action tomorrow at North Greenville at noon, and the softball team will play a doubleheader at Belmont Abbey College tomorrow at 1 o'clock. That victory assures UNC Pembroke of winning this year's Battle of I-95. And I'm guessing that they get Pedro's golden sombrero from south of the border as the trophy for winning that competition. Again, your final score tonight, UNC Pembroke 11, Francis Marion 5. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is Michael Hawkins, the Associate Athletic Director for Communication Services. Please join us tomorrow at 2 o'clock for the doubleheader. Enjoy the rest of your evening.